What's up everybody, it's me Johnny. Now it's time for my latest Elvis finds. But before I get started, I actually forgot to show a couple of things. Um, I had set off to the side that I forgot to show. It was in that stack and I said I had 78s and I never showed them. So I'm going to have to show that and I had a 45 picture sleeve. Um, and then I'm going to show my Elvis stuff and go into Elvis. So let me do that real quick. Um, I've been looking into 78s lately. And um, I found these two 78s. It's like of a vocal jazz artist. But they're really cool and unique. Um, I would think they're hard to find. They're in beautiful shape. But this is a 278 from Sarah Vaughn. Um, and it's and they're on a promo white label from Columbia Records. And these are the ones that were sent out to radio, as you can see. It looks like a picture of a disc jockey on the label. It's really cool. Um, and I like how it's in this in the sleeves. Like they cataloged it for a, you know, the radio station. So I thought that was really cool. And this is um, My Loathsome Feeling with Sinner or Saint. So I have two of them. They had a lot of good 78s at this record store I went to. And that's one of them. And here's the other one. This one's for uh, The Things I Offer You. And the song Deep Purple. So. There you go. So Sarah Vaughn, I love her voice. She's beautiful. She was beautiful. Um, I'm really into her right now, too. One of my favorite female artists. Okay, and I have this 45 sleeve. This guy had a lot of old new stock of just 45 sleeves, and I found this. Um, just a sleeve that a single uh, faith from my George Michael. Very good shape. I will probably I can probably get the 45 pretty easy. So I figured I'd just get it. If not, just cool to have. So, George Michael, faith. Alright, so now for the Elvis stuff. And I do have another 78 to show, but it's kind of Elvis related. And I'm going to explain that later. It's really cool. I want to say, I think it's rare. I'm going to talk about it when I get to it. But before I show the Elvis things, um, I want to show you one thing. So, like I mentioned before, I work a record show. But a guy who runs this record show here in Atlanta, um, his name is Keith Alverson. And if anyone knows their Elvis stuff, he used to photo Elvis too. So I talk to him all the time. He tells me a lot of things. And he has a couple of books um, called Strictly Elvis, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And I want to say Rossi, 1973, he showed one of those books. And um, they're very good books. So he took a lot of photos of Elvis. He followed Elvis around the South and photoed him. And now he, you know, they use him for releases like this one I'm about to show you. Um, he, for Legacy, FTD, you see his photos in there. So... I decided to bring this release with me, and I got him to autograph one of his photos in the Elvis Today 2015 Legacy Edition. So, on the inside flap, if you see this photo, it's one of Keith's, and he signed this spot for me. So, it's really cool. I really appreciate it, Keith. I mean, he's probably not going to see this, but he's a good guy. Really, he's a nice guy. Him and his wife, they're good people. So, yeah. So, he signed that for me. So, I really appreciate it. All right, so now I'm going to show the vinyl. Uh, I got some LPs, 45. I'm going to show this real quick. I only have one. This is original from 1966. Um, if they're original, I think I'm going to start getting them. A-Track. This is the A-Track of Girl Happy. And it's unopened. Beautiful shape. So, see? Good stuff. I was, I was going to get rid of my A-Tracks. I thought about parting with them. Um, when I did my show, my A track collection on here, but I decided to keep them. I'm like, eh, why not? All right, move this chair a little bit. Okay, so now it is time to show the vinyl. I got a lot of good stuff. Some stuff is new um, that I did not have before. Some is upgrades, stuff like that. Um, these are beautiful right here. I'm about to show. I'm gonna take them out of the sleeve as I go. Starting with the oldest album I have that I found. This is. A original stereo of Fun in Acapulco. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful shape. And I have a mono version, so now I have both the mono and stereo. My other one's a promo, so really I think I'm done upgrading because this is an amazing shape. And it's funny, last night I was I was going through these albums and I was talking to my daughter. I said, hey, which album should I play? And so I was flipping through them and she stopped at this one. She said, play that one. And I listened to it and it looks flawless. Um... Sounds amazing. Um, you forgot you were listening to an album. It was it's beautiful. I think this is a Hollywood pressing. 
And for some reason, Hollywood pressings are worth more. And to find it over here in Georgia, somebody must have moved from here, from there. So yeah, this is a beautiful stereo version of Elvis Fun in Acapulco. So there you go. Next is a stereo version, still in the original shrink, of the 1967 soundtrack for the movie Clan Bake. I'm advertising, of course, the bonus photo, which I have, and my other version, and I had the mono version of that. Now I have the stereo. So really, I think I'm happy with my other one, too. So I'm done with getting Clan Bake. So, yeah. And again, final's beautiful, just like this cover. So, good stuff. Next is from the 1968 movie. This is still in the shrink also. The soundtrack, the stereo soundtrack. I'll probably never find the mono version <laughs> of Speedway with the hype sticker still attached to it, which I had the bonus photo to it. I have another one, but I want to say this one's in a little bit better shape than mine. So I'll probably keep this one maybe apart with my other one. We'll see. Uh, but very nice. Of course, we all know, if you know your Elvis stuff, this album is very hard to find in mono. This came out in June of 68. Really, by that time, mono was gone. And I think only one came on the market, really, of this album. So it's very hard to find. And and also and also another hard one to find is Gold Records Volume 4. It's, a little, it's just a tad bit more common than this, because that one came out in January of 68. But actually, quick story. So my buddy who I do the record shows with, he has a mono version of the Doors, a certain Doors album. If you're a Doors fan, you probably know which one I'm talking about. Um, it's like all, th all the guys standing on top of a hill. But he has a rare mono version of that in beautiful shape. Um, he got it for nothing, uh, considering how much it's worth. And it's really unknown how much exists of those. Just like how it's really known, unknown how much exists of these, um, or how many are still around. So... Ozzy Gang Amano Speedway, not so good. But you know what? You never know. You never know. I surprise myself sometimes with some of the shit I find. Actually, at the end of this video, in the 45s, I have something really cool. So, stick around. Alright. So next, I had this album already. I have the original Rigid Vinyl, which is harder to find. But I couldn't pass this one up, because it was in beautiful shape again. This guy had a whole bunch of Elvis records. I... Got some out of there and you'll see them. Um, this is a beautiful original version of On Stage in the Shrink. This is from a sticker. But God, it's in beautiful shape. I mean, it's like somebody just bought it yesterday. It's one of my favorite albums. So now I have a cover in the Shrink. Um, really cool. And this is, and the vinyl is beautiful. Um, this is a more flexible vinyl. So, yeah. I want to say this is still a, it's a 4S one, but I mean, it looks brand spanking new. I'm probably going to play this. Um, I know this, this is in a tad better shape than my rigid version, um, as far as the vinyl goes. So now I have both versions of this. Um, so yeah, still in the original shrink on stage album. Good stuff. Mine I have of this one, I have an embossed promo. This one is not. This is just a regular version of it. But again, beautiful shape. This is Elvis' <clears throat> Fool album. They call it a Fool album. Really, it's just called Elvis. Uh, came out in 73. Beautiful shape. Nothing to report on this thing. Same with mine, too. Good shape. But yeah. And the vinyl, again, is amazing on it. So... All right, next. This is, I think the rest of the stuff is after death stuff that I've been going after since I have all the other stuff. So this is a sealed copy of the Elvis commemorative album. Really cool. Unopened. Uh, really nice. I don't think this is the one with the yellow vinyl, though. I can't remember. Because I used to have this album before, but it got ruined from uh, water damage. Um, we had a basement, and water got in there, and it wrecked up a few of my albums. I was very upset. Okay, this came out in 1980. Um, this is Elvis Grace's Volume 1. Um, this came out in the 80s. A little thing compiled by Joan Deary. This is the original embossed cover. So, this is how you know it's the original version. So, 
Greatest Hits Volume 1. This is from Reader's Digest. A little compilation thing from them. This is Elvis Sings Country Favorites. Okay. Good stuff. There you go. And this is uh, from Candlelight Music. His Songs of Inspiration. Never had this. Before. Beautiful shape. Good stuff. This is Mahalo from Elvis. I had this years ago. Wasn't in good shape like this. But now I have it again. There you go. From Pickwick and Candom. There's a few of them in here from Pickwick and them. And Candom. So... Nice shape. Uh, I never had this. I always passed it up as it wasn't in good shape, and now I have a good one. This is uh, Elvis Double Dynamite. I have the later repress from the 80s um, from Pear. Um, it emits a couple of songs from this one, but here's the original. Double Dynamite. Cool to have. I never understood why they chose this album, but I never had this before. This is a Pickwick Candom release of Frankie and Johnny. It's like, why did they just decide to reissue this? I always wondered. Um, reissued in 75. So, there you go. Cool. Had this years ago. Now I have it back. This is, uh... He Walks Beside Me. So. God, I'm already at 11 minutes. That went quick. Oh, yeah, it has the original little book. There you go. Cool. All right. Now I have another Candlelight box set. This one's called Memories of Elvis, A Lasting Tribute to the King of Rock and Roll. I think it's like a five-record set. Good shape. Can't really complain. I need to get some more boxes like this. Um, I only have really two of his. Um, this and another Candlelight one. But, yeah. So there you go. All right, now we are at the 45s. So, got some good stuff in here. 145, the last one, Michelle, I'm really excited about. Um, I'm starting to get these these at the death 45s, you know, since I don't have them. And I've been starting to get promotion promo 45s of Elvis. <clears throat> so, now I'm starting to get those, and I have some. So let me show you. This is from 85. This is Merry Christmas Baby with Santa Claus is Back in Town. It's on the green vinyl, as you can see. There you go. I always like the sleeve. This is uh, for Blue Suede Shoes and Promised Land. But this actually has a mistake on the label. This is a label with a mistake. This is, on Blue Suede Shoes, it says stereo. And the Promised Land side, it says mono. Really, it's supposed to obviously be the other way around, because Blue Suede Shoes was recorded earlier. So it would have been in mono. So there's a mistake on this label, so... I have that. I have this version. This is pretty common. I'll probably get the other version too, and it's cheap. This is a perfect. This is one in perfect shape of Guitar Man with Faded Love from that Guitar Man crappy album from eighty or eighty one. So very good shape. I cannot complain. Here's Unchained Melody with Softly As I Leave You. I didn't buy it for the sleeve. This is not in good shape. But this one is actually a promo. So, really cool to have. Good stuff. I had this in perfect shape already. <clears throat> the um, This single, bringing it back with pieces of my life. But again, this one is a promo. Good stuff. I had I bought this. I thought it was rare, but it's not as rare as I thought. Um, actually, the orange label's more rare than this one is. But this is a gray label of... I never owned it, never seen it, so I bought it. Of Promised Land. Okay. With It's Midnight. So, I never saw this version. So I decided to buy it. And it's mint shape, beautiful. I found this at the record show on Sunday. So, cool to have. All right, now we have a promo 45 of Let Yourself Go. Okay. With 
Your time hasn't come yet, baby. Make sure the other side again. No writing on it or nothing. Beautiful shape. This is an upgrade. I really bought it for the sleeve. Um, this mine had uh, <clears throat> a price sticker stamped on it. Um, this is Tell Me Why with Blue River from like 64. What was it advertising? Frankie and Johnny, so 65. So, or 66, one of those. But yeah. So, got a little upgrade, so I'm probably done with this one. All right, last 45. Um, this wasn't this wasn't a single release to the public. This is really just released for radio to ever um to promote one of his movies. This is not easy to find, people, and I found it. Um, it's not like in mint shape or near mint. I would put it at very good plus, maybe. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you, and you'll probably know what I'm talking about if you know your Elvis stuff. Here is this. Cool. This is Rouse about, okay. with one track heart cool so yeah i found this at the record show on sunday and i almost crapped uh this is something that just doesn't come up again just like that some 45 i found it's the rarity of it so apparently if it's mint i mean you never get full blown retail if it's mint it goes for like 400 dollars. but um of course it's not that you just see the label has a little bit of wear on it and the surface has you know like just a whole bunch of you know hair lines on the plain surface but it plays really good you know it doesn't skip or nothing glad to have it i paid um i want to say 15 bucks for this um it, i think he wanted 20 he gave me for five dollars less so i was happy you know so yeah so that's really cool good stuff I just want to apologize if my energy don't seem up. I'm just really trying to get over this cold. Really. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, usually I'm more bubbly than this, I think. I need to get over this. All right. So the last thing I wanted to show, I told you it was a 78 affiliated with Elvis. I found this at the record show also. So, well, how is it affiliated with Elvis? I'm going to show you. Let me just put this back. <laughs> All right. So this is a song that Elvis recorded. Um, it's the first song he ever recorded. But this is the original version. I'm going to just show it and then tell the story about it. This is the original version from the original artist. Um, look at that. Yup, that is Arthur Big Boy Crudup with That's All Right. Um... I was very excited when I found this. I've been looking at 78s. I just mentioned earlier in my other video. And I every once in a while I like to look at them. And if they're in good shape. And they look like an interesting artist. I like to buy it. And I saw this in the stack. And none of them had prices on them. At least I thought they didn't. And and I said to the guy running, the, running this place, this booth or whatever. I said, um, how much are your 78s? He said they're all between $10 and $20. So... I said, well, how much is this one? So I gave it to him. He checked it out. He's like, oh, that's a good one. He is $15. So I got this for $15. So really, really cool. But then I looked on the sleeve and it had a price there. But it's, it's written weird. So I'm like, maybe if somebody was trying to catalog it to organize it. So I didn't think that was a price. But the plain surface is in beautiful shape on both sides. So... And the other side's called Cut Ups After Hours. Really, the That's All Right song is the B-side of this single. But, and there's only one imperfection. Uh, it's right here. Um, you can see it right there. It's like a little chip off. See it? But you can just move the needle over and it'll go into the playing surface a little bit. There's still some room there to do it. But... I'm starting, I'm thinking this is really rare because, so I went home and I was looking it up. There's not one for sale on eBay. There's not one for sale on Discogs. They have a 1952 version that was on 45 on orange wax on Discogs for sale for $450, which makes sense because I'm sure color vinyl wasn't big at the time. Um, 
but nobody has a 78 for sale. So my boss, who I, I work with, he's actually my boss. He has a friend who's in the 78, so he's going to get with me and see. I'm going to ask him out. I'm trying to find out how rare this is and what maybe it could go for. So it'll be cool to find out. But yeah, nobody has one for sale on eBay. Um, I guess it's probably, it could be one that everybody wants, or maybe it's not that rare. I'll find out. But anyways, you know what, people? That's really it. Uh, I'm going to get off here. I feel like I'm boring people because I just don't have no energy because the sickness I'm over. But I don't think I have any announcements coming up. So I'll just play everything by ear. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys found this interesting and enjoyed this. So I'll see you guys next time, hopefully soon. Actually, you know what? I'll probably be doing my little piece on the announcement of Prince's reissues that are coming out soon. So I'll probably do that. So thank you guys for watching. And hopefully next time I see you, I'll feel better. So... <laughs> Y'all be good now, so see you later. Bye.